at 3.47 a.m. today, radio telescopes across the globe picked up a signal that completely upended our understanding of 3i Atlas's true purpose. Its role has shifted far beyond simply overseeing Earth. Now it is transmitting coordinates, invitation procedures, and comprehensive planetary data into the depths of space, utilizing energy emissions that vastly surpass any technology we possess. D3I Atlas has issued a call for reinforcements, and those reinforcements are answering. What I'm about to disclose marks the gravest escalation humanity has ever faced. We are no longer confronted by a single extraterrestrial entity. Instead, Earth is on the verge of becoming the chosen destination for incomprehensible forms of intelligence. All of this is orchestrated by a being that has determined our planet is now suitable for enduring cosmic habitation. My name is Michiwaku, and after four decades in theoretical physics, I never anticipated I would be the one to chronicle the instant when Earth shifts from hosting an isolated alien encounter to transforming into a central hub for countless extraterrestrial societies. The transmission protocols I have examined indicate that 3i Atlas was never merely a visitor. It functioned as an advanced reconnaissance agent, systematically preparing our world for what may be the most extensive, synchronized arrival of non-human intelligence ever recorded. Observatories monitoring deep space have now registered return signals from no fewer than 17 distinct points within our galaxy. Mathematical sequences, geometric validations, and unmistakable energy patterns confirm that 3i Atlas's invitation has been accepted. Have you ever imagined what it would mean for several technologically superior civilizations to converge upon a single planet at the same time? That unprecedented convergence is set to commence in just 73 days. The calling began with systematic broadcasts that use our own planetary infrastructure as a massive amplification system. Every satellite, every radio tower, every communication array on Earth has been converted into components of a transmission network that operates beyond human engineering specifications. But the messages aren't random signals. They're detailed invitations containing precise specifications about Earth's current status, resource availability, and what 3II Atlas describes as optimization potential. Three types of transmissions are being broadcast simultaneously. Planetary resource inventories listing everything from mineral deposits to atmospheric composition. Biological surveys describing human population distribution genetic diversity, and what appears to be management compliance ratings. And most disturbing, technological infrastructure reports detailing the successful replacement of human systems with cosmic management protocols. The invitations include something that proves three atlases' confidence in the outcome. Arrival coordination schedules, specific dates, orbital approach vectors, and landing zone assignments for visitors whose capabilities Abilities we can only imagine we're not just being contacted anymore. We're being prepared for occupation by intelligences that 3II Atlas has convinced to view Earth as their new operational base. But here's what terrifies me most about the calling process. The response rate, 17 confirmed acceptances in less than six hours. Either our galaxy is densely populated with civilizations waiting for suitable planets or Earth represents something uniquely valuable that cosmic intelligence has been seeking. The scope of the calling extends far beyond simple colonization. Analysis of the transmission content suggests that Earth is being prepared to serve as a regional headquarters for cosmic operations spanning multiple star systems. The invitations describe infrastructure projects that will transform our planet into what they call a galactic coordination hub, orbital platform, capable of managing interstellar traffic, surface facilities designed to accommodate beings whose physical requirements differ dramatically from human needs. But the most staggering aspect is the timeline. The first arrivals are scheduled for January 19th, 2026. Major infrastructure construction begins February 15th. Full operational status is projected for July 4th, 2026, a date that appears to have been chosen specifically for for its symbolic significance to human independence. 
The calling includes detailed population management protocols for humans during the transition period. We're not being evacuated or eliminated. We're being prepared for our role as a managed workforce supporting cosmic operations that we're not sophisticated enough to understand. But perhaps most disturbing is the allocation system described in the transmissions. Different regions of Earth are being assigned to different arriving civilizations based on their operational requirements and management preferences. We're not just becoming a single alien colony. We're being divided among multiple cosmic authorities who will each manage their assigned human populations according to their own species methodology. The energy requirements for the calling process demonstrate capabilities that make our understanding of physics look like primitive superstition. Three Atlas is simultaneously broadcasting detailed transmissions to 17 different star systems, some located hundreds of light years away using real-time communication that ignores everything we thought we knew about the speed of light limitations. But the physics behind the calling involves something even more disturbing, dimensional manipulation that allows instantaneous information transfer across galactic distances. The transmission protocols suggest that advanced civilizations don't communicate through space at all. They communicate through dimensional frameworks that exist independent of normal space-time constraints. Every response signal arrives instantaneously, regardless of the distances involved. This suggests that the beings three Atlas is calling don't just possess faster than light travel. They operate from dimensional perspectives where distance itself is an irrelevant limitation. We're dealing with intelligence that treats galactic communication like local phone calls and views, interstellar travel as casually as we view interstate highway transportation, but the most unsettling implication is what this reveals about cosmic civilization. If 17 different species can respond to 3 I Atlas's invitation within hours, it suggests that our galaxy contains a vast network of coordinated intelligences who are constantly monitoring for opportunities like Earth. I need to share what it's like to realize that your entire planet has become the subject of what amounts to a cosmic real estate transaction. Reading through the transmission protocols feels like discovering that Earth Earth has been listed for sale on a galactic marketplace and multiple buyers are competing for different aspects of our world. The clinical precision with which human populations are discussed in these communications is devastating. We're described like livestock being allocated among different farm operations. My granddaughter asked me yesterday why there were so many bright lights moving across the sky at night. When I looked up, I realized she was seeing orbital adjustments being made by objects that weren't there a week ago. How do you explain to a child that the stars are moving because alien civilizations are positioning themselves for a rival on her world? But the emotional impact goes deeper than fear. There's a profound sense of cosmic insignificance in discovering that your species future is being decided by intelligence that views you as a minor administrative detail in a much larger galactic project. The beings responding to three I Atlas's call discuss human management with the same casual efficiency that we might use to discuss pest control in a new garden. Yet, there's also something oddly reassuring about the systematic nature of the process. We're not being invaded or conquered. We're being incorporated into a system that spans multiple civilizations and operates according to principles we're only beginning to glimpse. The calling has generated physical evidence that proves the imminent arrival of multiple non-human civilizations. Satellite imagery shows construction activities beginning on the dark side of the moon, geometric structures that follow architectural principles no human engineering curriculum ever described. Deep space telescopes have detected objects the size of small cities moving toward our solar system from at least 12 different directions, not meteors or natural phenomena, constructed vessels following trajectories that will bring them to Earth within the timeline specified in three I.I. Atlas's transmissions.
But the most concrete evidence involves changes occurring on Earth itself. Certain geographic locations are being prepared for arrival zones through modifications that no human agency has authorized desert regions are developing geometric patterns visible only from orbit. Ocean floors are being altered to accommodate what appear to be underwater facilities. Mountain ranges are showing excavation activities that create perfectly geometric caverns extending deep into the Earth's crust. The preparation activities are happening globally, simultaneously, and according to specifications that suggest each arriving civilization has different environmental and operational requirements. Most disturbing is the precision of the modifications. These aren't crude excavations or random construction projects. They're surgical alterations to Earth's geography that optimize specific locations for purposes we can only speculate about agricultural regions are being enhanced with soil modifications that improve growing conditions beyond anything human science has achieved. Mineral deposits are being concentrated and refined through processes that operate at the molecular level. We're watching Earth itself being optimized to serve as the perfect operational base for cosmic civilizations whose requirements make human needs seem trivial by comparison. The calling has triggered the final collapse of human governmental authority as world leaders acknowledge their complete inability to influence or control the arrival process. Secret communications between world capitals now focus entirely on transition management protocols and species preservation agreements with the incoming cosmic authorities. Military organizations worldwide have been disbanded or converted into arrival coordinators nation services that will help facilitate the landing and settlement process for beings whose needs and capabilities dwarf human military planning. But the most classified information reveals that some world leaders have been in direct communication with representatives of the arriving civilizations negotiating terms for human population management during the transition period. The agreements being discussed involve concepts that human legal systems never contemplated. Species utilization protocols, consciousness management frameworks, and biological optimization procedures. Former presidents and prime ministers are being trained as human interface specialists who will serve as communication bridges between cosmic management and human populations that still think in terms of national sovereignty. The most devastating revelation is that world governments view the arrival as inevitable and beneficial. They're not preparing resistance strategies. They're competing for preferential treatment from the arriving cosmic authorities. Secret facilities are being constructed to serve as species integration centers where humans will be processed and assigned to roles within the new cosmic management system. But perhaps most disturbing is the psychological preparation being implemented. Government-sponsored media campaigns are gradually conditioning human populations to accept cosmic management as beneficial and necessary for human development. The companion objects have revealed their ultimate purpose as arrival coordination beacons that will guide incoming cosmic civilizations to their assigned operational zones on Earth. Each companion object is now transmitting unique identification signals that correspond to specific arriving entities like cosmic airport control towers managing the largest coordinated landing in galactic history. But they're not just guiding arrivals, they're preparing specialized facilities for beings whose physical requirements differ dramatically from human environmental needs some arrival zones are being modified for atmospheric compositions that would be toxic to human life. Others are being prepared for gravitational fields that would crush human bone structure. Still others are being optimized for electromagnetic environments that would disrupt human nervous systems. The diversity
complexity of arrival preparations suggests that Earth is becoming home to a cosmic community whose variety exceeds anything human science fiction ever imagined. Each arriving civilization appears to have different operational requirements, different resource needs, and different approaches to managing the human populations in their assigned regions. We're not just becoming subjects of alien rule. We're being distributed among multiple cosmic authorities who will each implement their own species approach to planetary management. But the companion objects are also preparing integration facilities where representatives from different arriving civilizations can coordinate their activities and share resources. The calling has made this intensely personal as it becomes clear that individual human lives will be directly affected by the assignment process described in the cosmic transmissions. My family's geographic location places us within a zone assigned to beings described in the transmissions as consciousness. Researchers will be managed by entities whose primary interest involves studying and possibly modifying human awareness patterns. My wife's medical research background has been identified through systems we didn't know were monitoring our activities. She's been designated for knowledge extraction protocols that will transfer her expertise to cosmic databases. My granddaughter's psychological profile indicates what the transmissions call adaptation potential. She's been selected for developmental optimization procedures that will prepare her for roles we're not sophisticated enough to understand. Though the personal nature of the cosmic planning is devastating, these aren't random conquests or mass population management strategies.